Let's reassess 49ers general manager Trent Balky because he was, I mean, Niner fans hated him when he left for yeah. good reason. I mean, he messed up some stuff. Yes. But now we've seen four years of the new front office and they make their mistakes too. They really do. And Balky's back in Jacksonville and for all of his faults, he's not a general manager now. He's a, he's director of player personnel, but he does certain things well. Like look at Jacksonville. They have no dead cap next year. They have 80 million in cap space. He really like, it's like an accountant. He cleared that up. Or I don't know what you would call it. He just really cleared that up and also gave him a bunch of draft picks. That's one thing we always did. He would stockpile. He wouldn't just trade him away. They have five picks in the top 66. And now he has, now he, what he can do is he can pivot any which way he wants. If he likes a player so much, he has the capital to trade up and he still is going to get five other players in the draft. If he doesn't like a player, he can move down. He, he controls the draft board. So that's the key for him. He's also, so the way I saw him is he drafted really well in 2010, right? He got big Anthony Davis, you potty, the Navarro Bowman pick, like, come on. Third round, trade down 10 picks and get an all-pro linebacker. Like, that's special. That's special. He's good at drafting players who block and tackle. Right. And he did a good job in 2011, too, right? Like, who thought the Niners were going to pick a Hall of Fame or a guy who had a Hall of Fame type of trajectory if he didn't have those issues at number seven, right? People yes. weren't talking Alden Smith. They were talking Blaine Gabbert. A couple people threw out Robert Quinn at the time. Some That's people right. like me were praying Patrick Peterson would fall, and they picked Alden Smith, and that was a terrific pick. Like, the Niners yes. had a first-round pick like Alden Smith where, like, you can say Bosa, but you and me could have drafted Bosa too. It wasn't that hard. So – it, when I look at when I look at what he did there, he did an excellent job. He where he really screwed up is where this regime is right now. So you had those two good drafts. You picked up an accumulated talent. You had a couple of fails in those drafts, but actually he screwed up in two spots. The first one is well documented, right? He couldn't get along with coaches, and that's why that what what that's what ultimately led to his ego. Downfall. I know better than you. I know better than you. Yeah. Right, and he deserved every bit of criticism that he got for that, and I was happy that he was gone. I still am happy that he was gone because of that. That's a problem. But number two was when he, after these two great drafts, you know the team was stockpiled with talent. When guys started to walk, his 2012 draft really hurt him. It wasn't that good. His 2013 mm-hmm. draft, when he started getting these ACL guys and Marcus Martin, who was just not didn't have the play strength to play in the NFL, and all these guys, that hurt him. And then 2014, yeah, like they lost Borland and Patrick Willis and all these people, but he didn't he didn't draft anybody that could replace these guys. The red shirt committee got him fired. The red shirt committee got him fired. Right. And that's where the Niners are gonna be now. Well, the Balky had a few players for them. So yeah, so we now had we had Tart, right? We had Tart waiting. Buckner, Armstead, Tart, Buckner, Armstead, Ward, these are who they love so much. Right. These are top defensive players on the 49ers. Yeah. Top defensive players on the 49ers. Even Armstead, whatever you say, they gave him a new contract. So they think very high. Who's the best defensive player this regime has drafted? Warner, Greenlaw, the linebackers, because Sal is great with linebackers. But right. Solomon Thomas. Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa. Yeah, well, yeah. But but the point is. I would have taken. <laughs> now this is where uh, the, the Solomon Thomas fail, you know, the Reuben Foster fail. All these Mike things McGlinchey. hurt them, right? Because now you pay Fred Warner. When Dre Greenlaw is up, what do you do with Dre Greenlaw? But you don't really have a linebacker waiting in the wings that you can just go with Dre Greenlaw. You know what I mean? And now when you start to lose guys because you have to pay the top guys, well, you're hoping that you drafted and developed all these guys that are waiting to start taking these roles. But the Niners now, they're kind of in that sticky spot where these bad picks like Pettis, because now that you didn't have Pettis didn't work out, you had to trade two picks to get Brandon Ayuk which means you had to trade two picks to get Emmanuel Sanders, which means that those four picks are four possible players that could have been on the 49ers developed in order to help them in the long term in different positions. So it's a really sticky situation. Really. So let's come back to Balky real quick. He wouldn't make these mistakes. In a lot, in a, in a, in a sense, the Niners are doing a lot of things that most GMs in the NFL wouldn't do. They, uh, they're like trading up for players, cancel, uh, losing draft capital and then chasing mistakes. Right. And Balky, what he would do is he's much more conservative than that. He wouldn't make these mistakes. Now he might pick the wrong players, not understand what his coaches want, but he's probably sitting in Jacksonville like, I wouldn't have done that. He, he traded, you know, the AJ Jenkins pick was bad 
was it absolutely bad? But the thing with him is that he traded him for John Baldwin after a year and a half or two years. So yep. he had a short he had a short leash on it. He a year, would, a year, one year. Right. The he was willing to he was willing, excuse me, to accept his mistakes. Like he cut Lamichael James and he cut Brandon Thomas and all these guys. Like he mm -hmm. understood that he screwed up. He just screwed up way too many times with yeah, his draft picks that really led to his downfall. But this regime, right? They kept Pettis around for two years while giving up two picks for Emmanuel Sanders, while giving up two picks for Brandon Ayuk. And now Brandon Ayuk, you know, I tweeted out yesterday. He's the best thing about the Niners season. He's going to be a super, super, superstar. But to get Brandon Ayuk in those two picks, you know, you're you're giving up something somewhere else, and we're not going to see it now because they were able to load up with talent and draft picks the last two, three years. But we're going to see it now next year and the year after when all these guys start to leave, you know, these undrafted guys like an Emmanuel Mosley and a Ross Dwelly and just a bunch of different guys that way. When they start to leave, that's when we're going to start to see, well, you didn't draft well in these areas and now you don't have any talent there. And that's where we're going to really see how good this regime is because Trent Baalke also was successful for his first three years. He had a great 2010 draft. He had a great 2011 Executive draft. Executive of the year in 2011. Executive of the year in 2011. So it's interesting. Maybe maybe Niner fans. I mean, they were through with him for good reason in 2016. But if you hold the current, if you hold the current front office to the same standard you held Balky to, it may surprise you how angry you end up being at what's going they on in Tampa there, right now. They they will end up getting held to that standard if the same things happen, because. Everybody loved Balky in 2010, 2011, 2012 right. still. So Trader Trent. This is still the this is the front office is still at the area that type of spot. And so I I'm I'm very interested. What do they do? Because it's not going to be a rebuild through the draft situation. Because it's and it's not really a rebuild. It's well, if you get a young quarterback, then you're kind of rebuilding because you've got to wait probably at least a year to get that yeah. guy ready yeah. NFL reps to be a Super Bowl team again. But when you wait that year, like one more year of George Kittle getting older, maybe a little more wear and tear because of his physical style, one more year of Debo getting older, you know, there's also other, like there's positive and negative variables that we can put through that way. So it's going to be- It's a crazy. conundrum and they created it themselves. This is their problem. We're going to do the best we can to help them because we're, I mean, vicious quality control too, but it's just, we didn't create this problem. Kyle, this is you. So we're going to try. That's why you bring us in. We're the fixers.